Hello everyone, and welcome to yet another video. Apple recently launched a brand new lineup of MacBook Pros with two new ARM processors. But today, we're not going to talk about those. I have a 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro with an Intel Core i7 9750H processor, 16GB of DDR4 RAM, 512GB of SSD storage, and an AMD Radeon Pro 5300M graphics unit. I'm going to make a review video quite soon, but for today, we're going to talk about one thing that the new MacBook Pros don't have. Installing Windows through Bootcamp. But before we check it out, we have a sponsor. Yay! This video is sponsored by Keysfan. Microsoft recently announced Windows 11 with support for Android apps, a redesigned taskbar, as well as brand new widgets. If you're looking to buy a Windows key directly from Microsoft, it'll cost you upwards of 200 US dollars. However, Keysfan got you covered. They have a Halloween special now, and if you use the code THH25 at checkout, you can get a Windows 11 Pro key for less than 27 US dollars. Links in the description. First of all, I know. You can install Windows on an M1 powered MacBook by using Parallels. However, this might not work if you're planning on using Windows to deploy a piece of code onto hardware. I have this STM32 board that I use for personal projects, and the program I use to deploy code doesn't even install on macOS. So I had no choice but to install Windows through Bootcamp. Installing Windows through Bootcamp is quite straightforward. You'll need to download a Windows ISO, and you can do this directly from Microsoft's website. You can then open up Bootcamp Assistant on your Mac and follow the instructions. Your Mac will reboot at least once, and ultimately, you'll be greeted by the Windows installation screen. If you've installed Windows on a PC before, this will be familiar. Once the installation is done, the Bootcamp Assistant will be installed. At this point, you're basically running a Windows laptop with an Intel Core i7 9750H, 16GB of RAM, and an AMD Radeon Pro 5300M. The first thing you realize is that the trackpad feels horrible. This is because macOS has a very interesting trackpad acceleration algorithm that Windows doesn't have. I've been running Windows on Macs for a very long time now, and Windows would never recognize the trackpad as a Windows Precision trackpad. This might not sound like a big deal, but it means that you won't be able to use the swipe gestures that you can do on macOS or other Windows laptops. To my surprise, when I checked a couple of days ago, Windows recognized the trackpad as a Windows Precision one. Good job, Apple. We're gonna talk about performance soon, but for now, let's talk about daily driving a MacBook with Windows running on Bootcamp. First and foremost, your computer is gonna be loud. All the time. The reason for this is that, unlike macOS, Windows won't switch between the integrated graphics and the discrete one. I've seen some workarounds for this, but frankly, at this resolution, you're gonna have a hard time with the iGPU. You can see the iGPU is struggling even on macOS, so I can't imagine how bad it would be on Windows. Battery life suffers as a result of this. Under normal use, my MacBook would last anywhere between 7 to 8 hours. When it comes to Windows, consider yourself lucky if you can get 4. With the fans running at full blast pretty much at all times, and the iGPU not being in use, I really don't think you should daily drive a MacBook with Windows running on bootcamp. If you have a MacBook without a dedicated graphics unit, you will get some of this battery life back, but the fans will still blast at full speed pretty much all the time. You fortunately still have access to the camera, but not to the Touch ID sensor. I somewhat understand Apple when it comes to this, as the Touch ID is connected to the T2 chip on the MacBook, which is used for security and privacy. It's a similar story with the touch bar. Yes, it still works, but it only works as either F keys or multimedia keys. So basically the functions you would have if you didn't have the touch bar at all. At least you can still set the keyboard to adjust the keyboard brightness automatically. So far, it seems like a horrible idea to install Windows on a MacBook through Bootcamp, but there is a catch. As I said earlier, sometimes you just need to run Windows. Parallels might work in some instances, but not all the time. And to be honest, aside from the heat and the noise, Windows will run just fine. At the end of the day, you're running Windows in an Intel processor and an AMD graphics unit. So if you have a MacBook Pro and you occasionally need Windows for something, you won't need to buy another laptop. Now, let's talk about performance and compare macOS with Windows. Just for fun, we'll also compare them with a similarly specced Windows laptop. As usual, the first benchmark is Cinebench. Cinebench 23 single core yielded similar results on both Windows and macOS, although macOS did manage to perform around 3% better. On the other hand, our similarly specced Windows laptop performed around 4% better than macOS. 
Cinebench R20 single core was an interesting one. I ran this benchmark more than 10 times on macOS, but in every situation, I couldn't get more than 262 points. This is extremely low for an i7-9750H. This might be a computer specific issue. We managed to get 462 points on Windows, which is around 5% better than our similarly spec Windows laptop. In Cinebench R20 multi-core, Windows and macOS got very similar results within the margin of error. Once again, the similarly spec Windows laptop managed to perform around 5% better than our MacBook. So far, why does macOS perform better than Windows? Apple is to blame. Apple realized that they needed to give more attention to cooling and thermals when they decided to put a Core i9 and a Radeon Vega 20 in a laptop thinner than my iPhone. To fix throttling issues, they changed the fan and power curves, but those only applied to macOS. So if you're running Windows on your MacBook, you're more susceptible to throttling. Anyways, let's continue with Blender. Normally, Blender gives you the option to either choose the CPU or GPU, but if you're on macOS, you're stuck with the CPU. This test surprised me, because although there was some performance difference in Cinebench, it wasn't as significant as this one. Scenarios took anywhere between 12 to 123% longer to complete on Windows. This will be a deal breaker if you're planning on using Windows on your MacBook for rendering. Speaking of Windows, our reference Windows laptop surpassed our MacBook in all scenarios. Speaking of rendering, let's have a quick look at Premiere Pro. Premiere Pro is demanding on both CPU and GPU, so we'll see how big of a performance difference there is. On my SSD, I have an 8 minute 4K video with audio as well as plenty of effects. This export took 10 minutes and 47 seconds on macOS, while it took 12 minutes and 14 seconds on Windows. In other terms, Windows was 15% slower. Our reference Windows laptop, on the other hand, performed around 35-43% to better. That laptop has a GTX 1650 instead of the Radeon, but frankly, it's impossible to find a Windows laptop with that GPU. We could keep benchmarking, but what we've done so far will give you enough information about what to expect in terms of performance. Back in 2019, when Apple released an update fixing thermals on MacBooks, I was wondering why they didn't extend that onto Windows. Looking at it now, it's clear to me that it was a part of their transition to ARM and that they wanted people to stop using Windows on MacBooks. On the other hand, although you do lose some performance, you will at least have access to apps and games that you otherwise wouldn't. This is impossible on ARM MacBooks. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking this video, subscribing to my channel, and checking out my other videos. Take care.